Uh, well, welcome everyone to the uh, next uh, uh, webinar that DataGene um, is offering, focused on the delivery of the new traits that uh, were released in April of this year. And um, great to see people from uh, different uh, states around the country um, joining us uh, for uh, lunch today. So I hope you've grabbed a cuppa and you've got a, a chance to have a little think about uh, feet and legs, which is the topic of, uh, of today's webinar. And I'm joined by Rowan Butler from Holstein Australia who will be helping me to deliver this um, today. Um, great to have Rowan, your experience um, on, on the call. Uh, just in terms of some mechanics around the webinar, um, there is a chat box down the bottom that you might be able to spot where um, certainly throw some questions our way. Um, if you'd like to, um, please feel free to. Um, great to understand what your questions are so that we can try and cover them um, through the webinar. And we'll have some time um, for some um, Q&A kind of at the end of the presentation as well. Um, we're aiming to kind of um, keep the kind of formal part to uh, sort of 15 minutes or so, giving us a good chance for some discussion um, afterwards. So let's um, uh, get rolling. I'll just share my screen so we can get started. Now it'd be great if I could get a thumbs up making sure that everyone can see the screen okay and you can see the slides. Fantastic, thanks everyone. It's uh, great to know that I'm not working with the assumption that, um, yeah, you've got, got the slides in front of you. Um, so uh, today, as I mentioned, we're focused on, on the feet and leg uh, composite ABV, and there's been really some interesting discussion that's been initiated following the release of this breeding value in, uh, in April 2020. So uh, we uh, look forward to going through and um, helping to unpick some of the questions that people have raised so far and also uh, trying to uh, answer any new ones that you've got today. Just when we think about type overall, I suppose, you know, the reason why we invest in delivering now 22 individual type traits and um, uh, four composite traits as well as overall type is because of the link between type and the longevity of cows. Um, we know that there's a strong link with, uh, you know, functional cows that uh, then are able to kind of last in our herds. and you know, that improves uh, on the cost side, lowers our heifer rearing costs, and on the income side um, has benefits in terms of um, larger, uh, uh, greater production yields um, from slightly older, um, older cows. So we know it's important, uh, but because there's quite a lot of traits here, so let's um, understand a little bit about how they, how they work. And this is a, an example, a great example of partnership really across um, industry to produce type uh, breeding values. Uh, we have breed associations who are responsible for setting the ideals and deciding what traits that they're going to evaluate. Uh, they decide the weightings of traits that go into the composites. And then those composite scores um, uh, that are uh, evaluated by professional classifiers, um, that information comes through to us at DataGene where we combine it with um, pedigree information, genomic information, uh, and, and in the case for many traits, also performance of cows uh, overseas uh, to produce the breeding values that we publish um, for bulls, both bulls and, and cows. Uh, in April 2020, uh, we had some new composites that were released, uh, rump, dairy strength, feet and legs. Uh, we also had uh, some updates made to the mammary system uh, composite uh, and overall type. And in essence, what we've done is uh, utilize the extra information that Holstein Australia is producing as part of the classification system in order to um, uh, incorporate that into our evaluation. Just one point here I'd also like to add, although it's not a composite trait, I would like to also highlight that there's a new breeding value called heel depth um, that Rowan will talk about a little bit later, but it's actually a new ABV, new individual ABV that was added also in, uh, in April. So when we think uh, um, the composites um, help us blend a number of different traits into one uh, single number to give us an overall picture about what um, the feet and leg story is um, behind each animal. 
one of the things I thought it might be interesting to have a look at is just uh, the relationships between feet and leg, the feet and leg composite, so the overall feet and leg score uh, that we evaluate and deliver an ABV for, the relationship between it and other traits that we also evaluate. And so what we've done here is just kind of highlight some of the traits that we thought you might find um, interesting as much as anything. Um, and when we think about correlations, this is sort of, um, you know, statistically how connected these traits are. Um, it looks at a, a big group of animals. Um, so there's always animals that don't show this sort of pattern. But on average, uh, we find that animals that are strong for the feet and leg uh, composite ABV are also strong for memory system and overall type. There's a moderate relationship between feet and legs and survival or longevity. A strong relationship, positive relationship with stature, as well as many of the individual other traits. Uh, there's a moderate relationship between feet and leg uh, composites and somatic cell count, uh, and also the trait of likability, farmer likability. Some, uh, not everything can be strong, and so there are some traits where it, it sometimes may be a bit surprising, but um, there's um, not as strong a relationship. There's you know, very little relationship between uh, feet and leg score and, and fertility um, and, and production. Um, but I think where our focus here is really about um, you know, a longer lasting cow, a cow that has good survival. When we evaluate the trait of uh, feet and leg ABV, there's a number of components that go into it. The major piece of information that contributes to the breeding value is the feet and leg score as it comes to us from, from Holstein Australia. And this has been available, uh, this, this data has been collected now for quite some, some time, um, for, you know, since about 2007 or so. But we still calculate breeding values on animals that are born before that time. Uh, they're still part of the genetic picture. They're still part of the population of animals that has existed in Australia. So for older animals, we'll use things like foot angle, um, heel depth, uh, rear leg, rear view, as uh, some of the contributing traits to the feet and leg ABV in the case where we don't have the feet and leg score. Now to get into the details about what each of those individual traits looks like, um, it's uh, lovely to have Rowan uh, Butler from Holstein Australia with us today. Uh, Rowan is uh, Holstein Australia's genetic improvement and research manager, but is uh, soon to transition to the role of, uh, of CEO. Uh, and I'm gonna continue to try and drive the slides, Rowan, uh, for you, but uh, great to have you on board to be able to kind of explain the classification um, side of, uh, of uh, the feet and leg trait. Excellent, thanks Michelle. Um, so yeah, I mean, obviously we, you know, feet and legs is a, a feature of the whole classification system. Um, dogs have decided to arrive and complain that really inappropriate moment. Um, so it's, you know, it's a large part of the, uh, feet and legs, um, a uh, large part of the classification system. You want to move to the next slide, Michelle. Um, and there's obviously that we have, uh, listed out there the, uh, four, five, four traits or five traits that com contribute to feet and legs. Um, and we also have another six trait locomotion, which is what we call a research trait, which we're um, collecting data on, but not doesn't actually con contribute to uh, the feet and leg score. Um, third placement listed at the bottom is a trait we talked about a bit last week, um, which we, I don't think we've included any slides this week on third placement, but if there are questions for those who missed last week's talk about rump, um, we can certainly talk about those uh, at the end. Um, but you've obviously got a, you've got another selection of four traits there that contribute foot angle, heel depth, rear leg side view and rear leg rear view, all contributing relatively equally. Um, it's, although you have some, certainly some stronger weight on rear leg rear view and heel depth there, um, which is just, is the way the, the, the breed, the, the, our breed development committee has decided to set those settings to try and, identify some um or try and link make sure we have those traits set right with with what relates to you know uh, benefit on farm and michelle you those some of those correlations you talked about i think link with what we've and how we've set things there with those relationships with so you know those trait relationships with um uh survival and cell count and some of the, and other and some of the other, other the 
part of trades. Um, I don't know whether it's hidden by everybody's my screen. It hides the little defects box or move that box across. Um, and we've got some deflect, defects there and they, they're probably a little bit self-explanatory. You know, an abnormal claw, well, that's an abnormal claw. Um, weak pastons. Boggy hocks is probably a, a defect that we don't see a lot in Australia. Um, we see a little bit of it coming out of Canada. Um, with the lax bone defect is a defect that really is looking at um, the bone structure. And if you've got a very, very fine boned cow, um, we will use that tick there to, to take that away. If the cow has got really, really refined bone that is um, weakening the, to the point of weakening the cow's bone structure in the leg. Crampy is another defect we see, don't see a lot of in Australia. We do see a little bit of it occasionally, very rarely. I um, certainly see a lot of it in the barns um, when we talk to our Canadian counterparts who use the same software. Um, they see a lot of that where the, the cow is stood um, or been standing and when she goes to walk away, she'll hold her leg out the back and shake it as though she's really, really stiff in the leg. Um, and it tends to be related to some swelling and other things for those cows that stand around on um, hard feed pads and in, in stalls. Uh, rear legs out back, again, that's sort of, you know, somewhat self-descriptive and toes out front also self-descriptive. So uh, if we want to roll on to the next slide, Michelle. Um, so foot angle being the first trait that we'll look at. Um, it, it's a very simple trait where we look at that, that angle of the hairline of the foot. Um, and we're looking for a, an intermediate optimum for this trait at, um, I think it's, around a seven, so we're looking for something slightly steeper in that foot angle. Um, and, and that's really, I mean, if you look at that, that diagram there, the, the first peak, that first the low, you can see what's gonna to happen to those toes that are, um, or those, that foot, when the foot angle is really, really low, like that and shallow, you, you're looking at a, a hoof that's gonna, or a, and a foot, that, a claw that's gonna to need to be trimmed or trimmed more often. Um, You've also got a, a problem there if you look at the way the angle of the, the leg is working down outside of the back of the foot, that certainly is gonna create issues with the way the weight is depressed through the back of the foot. Um, and we see a bit of that if we look at the, the issue with cows that get really, really steep and the description we use and classifiers tend to use is they can start the cows start to look like they've really got real steep up pig trotters. Um, and again, that's sort of where you've got the weight of the cow driving right down through the middle of the foot. And that's, you know, even if you know about your own feet um, and you stood on hard ground all day, you know how that starts to feel after a while. Um, so that's certainly what we're looking for is that intermediate optimum in the middle. Um, so if we want to go to the next slide, I think we've got a, a couple of pictures there. And so that's, a, you know, this is a picture of a cow. She's probably on the, on the lower end, I guess, this cow. And you can certainly see that those, ang you know, if you change those angles, what happens? Um, what happens through there. So, awesome, I think we cover there. So, so heel depth, and there's been a, a few questions around heel depth, obviously a new breeding value. Um, and looking at some of the correlations, it's actually quite exciting to get hold of that and have that breeding value now. Uh, a trait we've certainly believed has some relevance uh, for a long time. Um, and, and it's really, where it differs, it is significantly different from foot angle where we're actually looking at the, the hoof from the, the, or the foot from the back, and we're really looking for that, that V in between the two claws to, to be open and, de and, have, and have more space up in, in that claw. Uh, and, it, at, and the way we have it set, we have it set as a um, extreme ideal trait, um, looking to have you know, lots, of, lots of open space in there. And that's, there's, a, there's a few key elements around that um, that's about having open space in there so that if a cow does get an abrasion or a cut in there, there it's not, there's plenty of air and, and, and movement around there for that so that it doesn't become or reduces the chance of an infection. Um, the cows like that tend to be stronger in the, of, of the foot. And it seems, I mean, if we, when we look at the correlations with heel depth and some of the other survival traits, it certainly seems to indicate that that, that trait is um, reasonably critical from a type perspective. I want to move to the next slide, please, Michelle. So rear legs, side view. Um, this is certainly, an, we think it's a very important trait. Again, it's an intermediate optimal trait. Um, you know, looking to have a, an intermediate curve to the leg. Again, that 
cow with the really, really straight leg and not necessarily as much of an issue here sometimes, but certainly in the US and Canada when um, those cows are standing around on hard surfaces all day, that those legs become very swollen if they're very, very straight and don't have a lot of give in them. Um, again, if you go to the real extreme where the cow's got a really, really sickled, curved leg, um, that becomes, you know, again, the cow's got too much bend and is struggling to hold her weight and, and walk through. And that intermediate optimum certainly seems to help with cow's mobility um, across their lifetime. So if you want to move to the next one. Um, and so this is another trait that we've had for a while now, um, rear legs, rear view. Uh, and, and it's almost like you need to, if you want to think about it from a, a train track perspective, um, where the, the cow, the, the one, the cow with the legs hocked in, she's making a line, um, or walking in a line that where the, the legs are intersecting at the back. And when the cows walk, you can actually see those cows. They will, the legs of the, the rear of those hocks will actually touch at the back. Um, the intermediate cow probably doesn't necessarily touch at a, fi a, a five. Um, but she probably, she certainly probably doesn't walk straight. And whereas the cow at the, at the front, the nine, she probably is walking on almost like on train tracks, that real straight leg at the back. And that's what we're looking for is that cow that doesn't intersect, doesn't rub. The other is that, that rear leg rear views, the, those legs aren't rubbing and bruising and pushing up against the udder, especially when she's walking in, in the, you know, at walking into milking in the afternoon or first thing in the morning and she's not really pushing against that udder. Um, so I think that covers that one off, Michelle. And so, and so this is and this is a really handy table that Michelle's put in here for us that I think really shows some of these relationships with these traits. Uh, firstly, for heel depth, which is a new breeding value, and it's really good to see that that's that trait is related to. Um, I'm not. I mean, I'm not surprised. It's not. It's related to other foot, feet and leg traits, but it's good to see that it's got some relationship with some things especially survival, that relationship of, um, you know, is quite a high correlation of 0.55 with survival. Um, it's interesting, the relationship with fertility. It's obviously only very minor. And, you know, as Michelle said, there's trait, every trait has some things that sometimes you don't quite make sense of and you sort of look at them, it, but it's, it's only low um, and it certainly doesn't seem to be, I don't think it's a, a massive issue given that the relationship with survival is um, really quite strong. I think that covers that one. Would it be worthwhile just mentioning um, the differences between the linkages between heel depth and survival and foot angle and survival, Rowan? Yeah, it's, it's interesting, Michelle. I'm, I mean, I, I, I don't have a real strong hypothesis as on why foot angle is not so strongly related here as heel depth is. Um, there's probably a few things that play into this. I mean, each trait has its own complications in the ability to evaluate it. And heel depth is probably a really, uh, you know, if you looked at that, once you look at that diagram, I think it's a very easy trait to evaluate. And that probably helps in, in some accuracy. Um, and so whether that's, whether that's part of the contribution, I'm, I'm not sure why that is. And this is a, an ongoing thing that we've seen with feet and leg traits here in Australia, especially where the relationships with some of the other with some of these things have, have not been um, as strong as we would like, but we're now starting to see, uh, certainly with heel depth and rear leg rear view, a strong relationship with survival, um, which is good. Uh, but yeah, and, and we're in a process at the moment where we'll look to do some research in the next, over the next 12 months, two years. And that would be certainly one of those things we'd be looking at is foot angle. Um, and why that why that relationship isn't stronger, I suppose, or is there something we're we're not evaluating, or is there something else or a different way we should be evaluating it? Um, and so this is just my last slide, and this is something we did, and we haven't unfortunately got it yet for heel depth, but um, it just helps helps for you, the the field staff guys and those guys who are looking at when they're making breeding decisions. What is, the, what is the relationship between a bull's breeding value and the, the cows or his daughters on the ground? And so you have the, breeding, the average breeding or the breeding value across the top at 90, 95, 100, 105, and 110, which is the, um, 
you know, the standard deviations for the type traits is, is set at those five, five point intervals. Um, and that shows what the average, the average linear score for daughters of bulls at 90, at 95, at 100, at 105 and 110. And if you look at those tables, you, I mean, they're not, in some cases, they're not stark differences in the middle. You know, if you look at a trait like foot angle, um, you know, five, five and a half, six, they're sort of fairly similar, but you do see a, certainly a stark difference between foot angle at 90 and foot angle at 110. Um, and similar for rear leg, you know, rear leg rear view, you see some moderate difference in the middle, but if you really want to make a correction for rear leg rear view, you want to be at the, at the top end, um, top end of that graph, at the top end of that table or the bulls that are in that extreme to really drive that change. Um, if that's something you're looking for with it, whether it be an individual cow or across a herd. So I think that's covered that one, Michelle. Thanks very much for that, Rowan. Um, so there's some, uh, you know, some useful information um, there around the individual componentry of, of feet and legs. Um, if we kind of step back and think, well, what does this mean um, for us? Uh, you know, I think these new composites are really helpful to be able to, uh, you know, breed cows using a summary of breeding values. Sometimes it gets hard to um, kind of weigh up and compare each individual type trait. Uh, the composites help us get an overall view about uh, where a, a bull or a cow sits in terms of the, um, you know, the, the composites, feet and legs, rump, dairy strength, memory, and then the ultimate overall type. Um, I think Rowan has, has highlighted um, uh, in each description that, you know, the feet and leg traits, many of these are kind of Goldilocks traits where we have to be a little bit careful that um, we're not always sort of thinking that bigger is better um, for these traits. And one thing that's probably helpful is to kind of understand where your, the herd sits in terms of um, strengths and weaknesses and, and uh, what's appropriate for that individual context because it might be different. Um, just a reminder in terms of the expression of these breeding values, um, you know, we do um, use 100 as, as the average. Um, and if we're wanting to improve, say, uh, for example, overall type, then we want to look for good bulls that have an overall type ABV of greater than, uh, than uh, 100. I've referenced the Good Bulls um, Guide and the Good Bulls app. Uh, one thing you might have noticed uh, is your app has changed over the last couple of months. Uh, there are some extra composites now listed um, for each uh, bull in the app. Uh, if you open up your app and you don't see those composites, I suggest um, just deleting that version and, and downloading a fresh copy. Um, sometimes phones update uh, sort of differently. So um, yeah, hop onto the app store and uh, download a fresh copy if you're not seeing those composites uh, in your version of the app on your phone. Uh, Datavat has also been updated uh, so that those new traits are included in the Datavat uh, animal search views. Um, so you'll be able to look up both bulls and cows uh, for the new composites and the new trait of heel depth. Uh, if you'd like to go into this in more detail or you want to share some of this information with uh, customers, there are some resources online that you might find useful. So on the Datagene website in the learning resources area, uh, you'll find three kind of categories of information. There's some fact sheets, which are a really quick read. There's some tech notes that are uh, really designed for kind of breeding enthusiasts, people want that, that want a bit more uh, detail. Uh, if you want to read um, more um, longer and more detailed documents, then there's some uh, a new group called Genetics Backgrounders uh, that kind of has a full bottle. Um, so there's three different sort of levels there that you can pick and choose depending on what sort of suits um, the, uh, uh, the purpose that you want the information for. Uh, I, look, I'd be remiss to not thank um, the you know, the many people that are involved in delivering uh, breeding values, in particular, this, uh, the new research that's delivered uh, and implemented in, in the new breeding values uh, comes to us from the researchers at, at Dairy Bio, um, Agriculture Victoria, uh, with support from Gardner Foundation and, and Dairy Australia. 
Um, the research isn't enough by itself. We also um, want to recognize the role of the data suppliers in, in, this, in this chain. So farmers who classify their cows, uh, breed organizations that uh, conduct the classification, uh, bull companies that support uh, the classification um, through the linear type evaluation system, uh, herd test centers and dairy software providers are all really important uh, in this, um, in this um, aim to deliver some better, better breeding values to farmers. Now that's the kind of conclusion of the formal sort of part, but we do have some time for, for some questions. Um, I know that Leanne's online as well, who uh, might have been collecting some questions along the way. Uh, so please feel free to um, uh, pop through uh, something that you found interesting or something you'd like us to go over again or um, a new topic that you'd like to pick up. Um, Michelle, do people realise they can unmute themselves if they want to ask a question? Ah, uh, that's a good point. Yep. So please feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question or pop it in the chat box um, if you wish. So, so one, one question I, I was wondering um, whether Bruce Ronalds might um, talk to us about a bit. He said he's often asked the difference between heel depth and foot angle. Um, just wondering whether, whether people are starting to um, understand the difference in his team and, and whether they're using those breeding values at all. Yeah, can everyone hear me? Yeah, so um, yeah, that's that's obviously the question that keeps being asked with a new trait that's come out. Um, certainly, I'd have to say that's probably the best I've seen uh, from my understanding, um, particularly. Um, so certainly, I believe this is being recorded, so I'll be sharing this with uh, with my team uh, in regards to uh, the explanation on heel depth. Um, so yeah, that's answered the question from our perspective. So yeah. Thanks, Bruce. That's good to know. Perhaps Jan, did you did you have um, any perspective that you wanted to give us from a a, a, a more farmer on the ground um, perspective? I don't know. I, I've tried to unmute Jan, but she I haven't been able to. Let me see if I can now unmute all. Okay, I've unmuted all, so everyone should be able to speak now. I suppose, Leanne, um, the good part about this is we are, um, uh, we've got this webinar that we can sort of uh, share and our doors are open in terms of questions that you might have. So um, if something pops up uh, later that you'd like to ask, um, please feel free to drop us uh, an email or give us a call. I'm more than happy to uh, work through um, questions that you might have as they, as they pop up. I'd like to thank you guys for taking some time and grabbing a cup of, and, and thinking about uh, the feet and leg composite. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Leanne for helping to organize and, and Rowan for um, helping us put together the content uh, to be able to share this. Um, and also just a shout out to the Genetic Evaluation Standing Committee. Um, a group from there is quite kind of um, keen for us to be able to uh, you know, do more to be able to explain the breeding values um, more clearly to a broad, broader audience. Uh, and um, it was their um, um, suggestion and, and um, encouragement to do this sort of webinar series that um, has um, put us in the position we are today. So I'm, I'm really pleased that these ideas are coming and that we've got um, the ability to be able to uh, try something new. So thanks very much for, um, for, for that um, support. And Bruce, we will circulate a link um, to the recordings either later today or tomorrow. Yeah, thank you. Fantastic. Well, I hope everyone has a fantastic day 
um, uh, stay safe and we'll uh, talk to you again next week. Oh, just a plug ne for next week. Um, we do have another webinar um, coming up next week. So uh, uh, please feel free to hop on at, uh, at uh, 12.30 next Thursday. Um, and we'll continue the series for a little while and see how it goes. So next week is Dairy Strength and the following week is a data bat demo. Great. Thanks, Leanne. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Ron. Thanks, Michelle.